In this video, we're going to, this is an extension of the previous video, and in this video, we're going to look at how to balance reactions in basic media. And it turns out that um, the only extra steps that, there, there are two extra steps that you have to do when you're in basic media. And what you have to recognize is that in basic media, we can't have H plus ions hanging around. So in the end of the, the last video, our balanced reaction had um, H plus on one side of the, the reaction. So what these two extra steps are going to do are going to compensate for the, fa the fact that the reaction takes place in basic solution and that the predominant species that we can have is OH minus, not H plus. So let's look at how we do this. So um, here we're going to balance a redox reaction in basic solution. So with lecture problem two, we're going to balance a redox reaction in basic solution. Uh, again, it gives us a, um, a skeletal reaction, and it says H2O2 plus ClO2 gives ClO2 minus plus O2. So let's start by looking at the oxidation states of various atoms. So uh, in this case, the oxygen is one, and H2O2 is one you should recognize right away as being an unusual case, because with H2O2, we have H, which is always plus one. So this gives us two H's and two O's. And if the two H's are plus one, that means that the O's have to be a minus one charge. This is that unusual form of oxygen called peroxide. So if you go back to chapter four and you look at the exceptions to the rules for oxygen, peroxide is one of those rules where O can be a minus one charge. Okay, so then on the right side, uh, I'm sorry, so not on the right side. So then with the ClO2, um, we have two O's, which are two minus, and then we have the Cl. So this is going to give us a plus four charge for the Cl over here. And then for the ClO2 minus on the right, we have uh, two O's that are minus four, and then we have an additional negative charge. So this is going to be plus three for ClO2 minus on the right. And then oxygen over here is going to be zero because it's, in its, mo it's, a, it's a molecule in its elemental form. So that's going to give us zero. So our H2, our O is going from minus one to zero, so that's being oxidized, and our Cl is being reduced. So now that we've identified the half reactions, we can now write our, our half reactions um, according to step two. So we have H2O2 goes to O2, and we have um, ClO2 goes to ClO2 minus. So let's look at uh, step three, now that we have our half reactions written. So it says balance all atoms except for oxygen and hydrogen. Well, on the left, we only have oxygen and hydrogen. So um, all of the other atoms, which there aren't any, are balanced. Um, and then on the right, we have Cl, which is the Cl, chlorine, which is the only atom that's not oxygen and hydrogen, and that's already balanced. There's one on the left and one on the right. Okay, so now it says balance the oxygen atoms by adding H2O molecules to one side of the equation. So let's, let's start proceeding down with um, just the H2O2 at this point. So in that case, the oxygen atoms are balanced because we have two oxygens on the, the left and two oxygens on the right. Then it says balance H atoms by adding H plus to one side of the equation. So in this case, we're going to put two H plus on the right side because we have two hydrogens that aren't accounted for. Okay, and then so uh, when it comes to 3D, we have to balance the electrical charge. So uh, if we just added two positive charges on the right side, we have to add two electrons to that side to get everything to be uh, zero on both sides. Now everything has, um, now everything, the charge on the left, which is zero, and the charge on the right are balanced. Okay, now let's look at the other side of the equation. So what we've got here is we've got ClO2 goes to ClO2 minus. So we balanced already the Cl. That's already done. The oxygens are balanced, so we don't have to do anything there. Um, we don't have to add any protons because we, don't, we haven't added any waters or we don't have any H atoms that are hanging around that need to be balanced. So this is actually a really easy one. All we have to do is just add one electron on the left side to balance out the charge because we have one minus charge on the right and we have a minus charge on the left. So part of the reason why I, I showed you this example is because you can see that sometimes the steps, we can skip steps when we don't need to do things. You don't have to have 
every step. It just depends on what you have in front of you. But if you follow them and look at them in sequence, you'll see that it will lead you to the right answer. Okay, so we've got the left and the right balanced. Now let's go on to step four. So it says multiply each reaction by a factor so that the electrons cancel when you combine the two reactions. So we're going to have to multiply the one on the right by two to get that to work out because we have two electrons in the um, oxidation and we only have one electron in the reduction. So that's going to give us two electrons plus two ClO2 gives two ClO2 minus. And now we can combine. So we, we are going to have our reactants on the left, H2O2, that's the only reactant on the left, plus two electrons, plus two ClO2, those are all of our reactants, gives O2, plus two H+, plus, plus two electrons, plus two ClO2 minus. So I've, I've, I've pulled together everything, now we're going to start canceling things out. The H2O2 is only on the left, so nothing to cancel there. The two H plus can get can the two electrons can get canceled, and then that basically leaves us with the final um, answer if this were in acid. Now the problem is so this this would be the answer for acid. The problem is. We can't have these H plus hanging around. So now let's go on to step five and see how we address the fact that we have these H pluses around. So it says, note the number of H plus ions in the reaction. Add the same number of OH minus ions to both sides of the reaction. Okay, so we're gonna add two OH minus here, and we're gonna add two OH minus here. And then, okay, so then step six, it says knowing that H plus will react with OH minus to give water, Combined H plus and OH minus ions to give H2O molecules. Cancel out H2O molecules that appear on both sides of the reaction. So what we're basically saying is, is if we have H plus and OH minus on the same side, these are going to cancel to give us water. So what we're going to have then is we're going to have H2O2 plus 2OH minus plus 2ClO2 gives O2 plus 2H2O plus 2ClO2 minus. Now, um, we don't have any waters that we have to cancel out at this point because there were no waters on the left. So this is looking like it's a good equation. We just have to put in phase labels at this point. So the phase labels are going to be for the H2O2 is aqueous. I get that from the above reaction. OH minus is aqueous. We know that because it's going to dissolve. The ClO2 is aqueous. We get that from the above reaction. The oxygen is a gas, we get that from the above reaction. H2O is a liquid, and ClO2 minus is going to be aqueous. So this is the base answer for this reaction. And you can see that it's just a simple extra two steps. We add the OH minuses to both sides to compensate and get rid of all the H plus, And then we wind up with OH minus and H2O in its place. So that's how you balance a redox reaction in basic solution.